Great. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Reed from Stoss. This is uh, Eric Bungay uh, from N Architects. We're here with our friends from ZAS and Laura, uh, as well as our collaborators uh, you see up on the screen. We started with the lakefront, uh, this ecologically and socially rich place, a line of rich contrasts and slow gradients where you see these dramatic green bluffs rising up to meet the lake, uh, long, low flatlands that extend access down to the lake and cultivate new life, and of course, the lake itself, th this incredible regional natural resource. Along the shores, of course, Toronto was built, one of the world's great cities. Here, human ambition, technology, culture, and social life flourish um, uh, today. And even though it's a place that celebrates now its waterfront, in many ways, the human constructions of the city have amplified the distinctions between land and water, between city and lake. Of course, the site, as you know, was once water. And we want to reclaim water, um, water space on the site and in the city by blurring the lines between what's solid and fluid, what's city and lake. The park itself offers a spectacular panoramic view of the harbor, but once you get there, if you can figure out how to get there, um, there's not much else to do. Uh, the park is severed from the city. There's no connection between Bay Street and the lake. It's a confusing and frustrating experience to f even find the ferries, never mind wait in line to board them. Uh, and it's a park with no identity, no way to know where it is uh, and hardly clear routes to get there. And it really makes you wonder, why am I here? To counter these challenges, and also to transform the experience of the park, of the ferry, and the lake, we propose five principles. First, um, physically and visually reconnect uh, to the lake. Uh, make the park the premier portal and viewport to the islands. To immerse the terminal function within the park spaces so that the park itself uh, is integrated as part of the journey to the islands. Three, socially activate the park for all four seasons, making it a place you want to be even in the most extreme conditions. Four, build on the rich uh, culture and quirkiness of island life. Here is a place like no other, a world apart but still in the city, a place of quaint cottages and small creeks, centered on outdoor living all four seasons round, a place of spectacle of biplanes and horses leaping into the lake. And while the islands uh, offer an escape from the city, they're still a place of cultural and social diversity. And of course, there's a little bit of this too. In other words, you can do things there that you can't quite do in the city, legally. We want to bring a little bit of that spirit, a little bit of that culture, a little bit of that sense of uh, abandon, if you will, into the park, into the experience of the park, so that the park becomes your first experience of island life. And fifth, we want to create a truly unique, spectacular, and fantastical place, an otherworldly place, a phenomenal place, an immersive place. So we propose Cloud Park, and here we imagine the cloud in many different ways. Cloud is an environmental phenomenon that taps into the dynamics of the lake. Cloud is an icon, an identifier. Cloud is a living and breathing gateway as a luminous canopy of light. It's the cloud that cools when it's hot and warms when it's cold. It's the cloud both as spectacle and as if an ephemeral beacon that changes and shifts with the seasons and that loosely reorganizes the park and the terminal activity and reorients uh, our relationship to both the harbor and the larger environment. Cloud Park, then, is a fantastical place, one that celebrates Toronto's unique connections to lake and islands. It plays off the city's diverse and dramatic climate. It imports a bit of the island's rich culture and embeds sustainable strategies, even through its relative modesty. 
It's a place where distinctions between land and water, between earth and sky dissolve, a place where people and an amplified experiential nature may interact. The project starts with the Canadian landscape itself, the source of our identity, and adds a twist. Here we reestablish the eastern deciduous forest uh, as a diverse canopy across the entire park. And we design it along a continuum from lush groves to elegant bosques. We reconstitute the ancient Canadian shield as granite surfaces that are extensions of the harbor front spaces directly into the park and also provide a solid foundation that can stand up uh, to the cr many crowds moving through it. We amplify and diversify our experiences of water in all its forms, reconnecting people to Toronto's great natural resource. And we animate and amplify Toronto's dramatic lake fogs and gentle mists, rendering them immersive, interactive, and ethereal. And we do this along a series of material and spatial gradients with no hard edges, allowing for one spatial condition simply to give way to another. The park scheme is really quite simple. Its three-part organization is inspired by the lakefront itself. Here, a great green bluff rises as it, as it approaches the water's edge. The flatlands create a gentle slope from Bay Street all the way down uh, to the harbor wall. And the water itself is brought into the park in the center um, while activity from the park is extended into the water in the water basin. The park reestablishes physical and visual linkages to the harbor, starting with primary views down Bay Street, and supported by a number of very simple functional reorganizations of access requirements. What I'm going to do is take you on a walk through the park now, starting with the Cloud Gate. Here, we're going to walk in through the entry grove, over to the hills, down to the water's edge, up to the bluff, and out uh, to the water basins. The first move is dramatic. The idea here is to reestablish very clear connections between downtown and the lake. Here we remove the tunnel and the service drive, creating dramatic views to the park, uh, to the terminal, to the harbor, and to the islands from Bay Street um, and Queens Key. Hovering above this entry plaza is an extraordinary cloud of mist and fog that engulfs the existing bridge that connects the hotel to the condominiums. The cloud itself forms a beacon from a distance. Uh, it's an unearthly phenomenon for those experiencing it from below, and it's a fantastic experience for those walking through the bridge uh, to the hotel. Once you get through the gateway, you're fully enveloped in the grove. On the east, a shared plaza for queuing, uh, and on the west, lush and shaded lawns uh, for active or passive use. The grove expands and contracts, um, torquing, if you will, in order to reinforce some of the views to the ferries and the harbor. The spacing of the groves changes, allowing for very intimate seating areas and also for more expansive areas for queuing, uh, for bicycles, for carts. Uh, and carriages. Fall color in the grove intensifies at the center and at the water's edge, again reinforcing these connections. Within the grove we find our friend Jack, uh, repositioned as part of the entry experience. We also want to amplify Jack's presence through translations of that phrase, Jack's got your back. Uh, here we imagine uh, that phrase translated into dozens of languages that are spoken here in Toronto, and that these words are then embedded into the surface of the plaza, creating a direct path from Bay Street down to the terminal. In this way, alluding to the hundreds of people, thousands of people, whose lives Jack touch, whether they're natively from here in Toronto or from other places around the world. Within the grove, you also find these log benches that evoke the origins, their origins, um, in the Canadian wilderness. Here we transform the log into sensuous seating elements that can accommodate people in a number of ways and can be scattered in different areas uh, within the park. To the west, the canopy expands to the rolling hills and shaded lawns. Here are quieter areas for reading, for waiting, 
for picnic and for play, even for small-scale performances over time. Within the grove, you also find the adventure play forest, uh, tucked into a crevice of the hills. Here is a place for kids to let loose, to run, to climb, to jump, to swing, and to hang, and to do it among the upright and fallen sculpted logs that extend the park's connections to the Canadian wild. At the lake's edge, the canopy and sloping plaza give way to two pools of water that extend the harbor's waters back into the site. Here, summer jets and intense mists offer play, cooling, and visual delight. While in the winter, uh, those ponds are converted to ice skating ponds and warm fogs that extend the life of the park. In all seasons, the terminal building itself acts as much as a park pavilion as it does a terminal. Uh, with concessions, uh, ice skate rentals, it acts as a warming hut uh, and provides a nice glow uh, on the waterfront. From there, we can climb the winding path to the top of the bluff, the bluff that offers spectacular views out to the harbor, to the islands, with a dramatic sloping lawn that extends down to the swim plaza in the water basin. Here's a place to shed some inhibitions, to play freely, and to indulge in the steaminess of the summer. The basin itself is transformed with floating pools, floating walkways, and floating paths uh, that allow for new sheltered experiences for kayakers and that extend our many social and ecological interactions with the lake. In the winter, the pool's steamy effects are amplified, creating fog and mist clouds and provocative juxtapositions bare skin against ice, swimming in a frozen lake. It's alluring and fun, fantastical, and an utterly unique experience of the harbor. The waterfront promenade of granite sets and maple leaves is extended along the park edge and through the center of the park all the way through to the Young Street Slip. The maple leaf pattern here traces the path but dissipates into the park in order to reinforce the clarity of that primary set of connection. The promenade culminates in the art walk between the hotel and the operations building, as well as the Yonge Street Quay, a multi-use space that includes uh, public boardwalks and fish habitat in the slip. And we lost something. So I'd like you to imagine yourself arriving at the um, ferry terminal. Perhaps you've been approaching from Queen's Quay after passing a cooling veil of fog, or, it, or you're under the trees, or maybe it's winter and you're arriving from the boat and there's this expanse of ice in front of you. Wherever you're arriving from, the terminal will appear as a multifaceted jewel-like pavilion, the building with no backside. As we all know, it's impossible to see the ferries from anywhere practically right now. Um, even though the access from Queen's Key to the ferries is quite direct. So we decided to split the terminal into two. This will remove the visual obstruction. And this will untangle the overlapping uses of ferry and park users. So the two smaller buildings, a public amenities building to your left at the west, and a ferry operations building to your right, which is the east, will feel much like a campus. So now you'll be able to look out between them and see the water and the islands beyond. At a larger scale, we've also made sure that this transparency will work to scale the park. The building will no longer block the views that matter, but enhance them, and it will now be possible to simply walk from Key Queen's Key directly on a level surface to the ferries with an optional detour through the pavilion if it's raining, or if it's cold, or if you want to go to the cafe. We've decided to forego any kind of canopy, thinking that the canopies that are best are trees, but we can always go inside. So the journey to the Toronto Islands will begin as it ends, with a direct connection to the outdoors. So we're all too familiar with the way most buildings don't re uh, relate to landscape, um, but due to its prominent yet carefully um, selected location, we have the opportunity to create a strong connection between the terminal pavilion and the various um, multiple fronts that it, that it connects to. 
So the building's five facets will frame and engage the diverse aspects that, um, of this great site around it, equally addressing park, city, ticketing, ferries, and islands. Our most fundamental challenge was to drastically improve the ferry terminal experience, or the passenger experience, from the moment of arrival to departure. The current journey, as we all know and have heard many times, has been described as a cattle enclosure, and um, the security requirements really disconnect the passenger from the ferries and the surroundings and stand as a barrier between the city and islands. But there's one good thing about it. It's direct, and it's outdoors, and it's pedestrian, and that's one thing we've maintained. So what we've done is we've doubled the queuing area, we've incre increased the size of the holding area to about 30%, We've reorganized the operations area to make it more efficient. We, thi we think we can rethink this experience as a more lush environment while maintaining operational needs. Now, this was our first sketch. Could the journey from the city to island be direct, re-envisioned as a seamless walk in the park, as it were? You may even look forward to lining up in our project. You could be under the boss cool shade or in the beautiful new pavilion. So the terminal is conceived as a simple one-story building that gently increases in height from land to water. In some ways, we're trying to establish a dialogue with some of the smaller scale structures that are on the Toronto Islands. We think it shouldn't be too big. With its unique stepping roof, we think it'll look different from every vantage point. And we've decided to maintain your experience in the terminal, firmly rooted to the ground. Elevated vantage points are provided in the park. So no elevators or large stairs or ramps here. Simply a simple, accessible pavilion with continuous and breathtaking views. So upon entering the pavilion, you'll find yourself in a soaring luminous space defined by an undulating ceiling of maple slats above you. You might first be drawn to the expansive views of Toronto beyond, but ample room will be provided, and we also think that the experience should be intimate, like the islands. So the building will act as a portal between city, ferries, and islands, where you've come from, how you're getting there, and where you're going that'll appear as a dramatic unfolding horizon as soon as you enter. So it'll feel more like a park pavilion that provides amenities to passengers than an accessible ferry pavilion. So now for a little bit about how it works. The, the terminal pavilion has been designed to serve various publics, the park, passengers, cafe patrons, maybe even wedding parties, ice skaters. But at its core, it provides a cafe, enough bathrooms, and uh, a skate equipment rental, and enough waiting space. On the eastern end, you see the, hol uh, the holding bosque, um, rather than waiting in a building, we want you to wait in a bosque. And then the ferry operations building, which is sited out of harm's way for safety and quiet and also for the comfort of those who work there. So how does it work in the different seasons? In summertime, we imagine that you could walk straight through the bosque, through the ticketing, newly designed ticket kiosks, and use the building or part of it. In wintertime, there could be direct access from the building to the ferry operations area. And in a sort of a utopian future that we hope is not too soon, not too late. It might function like the metro if you just walk onto the ferry and pass security. So if you're a, a ferry passenger, you're a red dot. If you're a park user, you're a blue dot. We've tried to integrate all of these uses into a continuous flow east to west, connecting the boardwalk to the north of the building. The building itself is designed with thinking of materials that connect to the Canadian landscape at large, stone, trees, foliage. So it's a glue land structure that hangs a wood slat ceiling, and the building exterior is clad in a metallic, iridescent, pearl-like, pearl um, leaf-like structure. So we have designed the terminal so that it can be realized economically, so that it can be phased to maintain current operations. And as a Canadian myself, speaking on behalf of our Toronto-based partners, we hope that our approach to balance that's not fair because we were cut off before. <laughs> we hope that our approach to balance the iconic with the practical and the visionary with the implementable um, will resonate with some of you and will resonate with the modesty and vision that will honor Jack Layton. Uh, just to wrap up, for phase one, we imagine implementing the cloud gate, the most visible piece of the park that embeds the fundamental essence of the idea here. Uh, it also is out of the way for future construction. We also propose commissioning a series of inflatable floating hot tubs to be tethered in the basin, a fun and interactive way uh, to start to engage uh, people. In all of this, uh, Cloud Park rehumanizes the ferry experience. It reconnects us city dwellers to the dynamic, rich, uh, and phenomenal lake environment around us. 
uh, it creates an entirely new and immersive and interactive experience of water in the city and of civic space. It's designed with a light touch, a dramatic effect, and a pragmatic eye, but with substantial impact on how we all reconnect to the harbor and to its treasured islands and experience the lakefront anew. Thank you.